Are you wondering how many sales your indie game could potentially make? If you're on a new indie game dev journey, one of the things you'll learn is that most indie game developers don't succeed financially with their first game. This doesn't mean their games are inherently bad, it's just that financial success isn't always easy. The market is getting bigger each year, and 2020 witnessed more than 10,000 game releases on Steam, breaking all previous records and raising the bar even higher for devs and publishers. According to a study made in 2020 by Video Game Insights, around 50% of the indie games on Steam made less than $4,000, and only 9% made more than $200,000 in revenue. Keep in mind, a lot of indie devs have part-time or full-time jobs and develop their own games as a hobby or side project. This video is the second part of our series about indie game revenues and how you might think about the prospects for your game. We will explore six games and feature both games that were financial successes and games that weren't. We feel this may help you guide your game to a better outcome at the time of its launch. All the numbers we are about to mention were made public by the developers through interviews, talks, blog posts, and videos. We want to thank all of them for publishing their data. With it, we are able to grow as game devs and learn about these amazing stories within the indie community. Without further ado, we are Ask Game Dev, and these are six more real examples of indie game sales numbers. 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 Welcome back. We make videos on how to elevate your game development and inspire others. If after watching this video you want to continue the game dev conversation, check the video description for a link to our Discord server. We are now making fresh Ask Game Dev content on all of the major social networks, so be sure to check us out there, too. Mentioned in several Ask Game Dev videos and coming directly from Vancouver, Canada, our first entry on this list is Celeste by Extremely OK Games or XOK Games. Celeste is a touching 2D pixel side-scroller platform game about helping Madeline overcome her external and internal obstacles while getting her to the top of Celeste Mountain. Packed with colorful pixel art and easy to learn but hard to master mechanics, Celeste has captured the attention of a huge amount of people in the game community. The idea for Celeste dates back to 2015, when Maddie Thorson and Noel Berry made a small and eye-catching side-scroller for the fantasy console Pico 8. This game, presently known as Celeste Classic, was made in four days and consisted of 30 segments of tough-as-nails gameplay. The idea caught on. Several members joined the team remotely, and by 2016, Maddie and Noel revealed a new and improved Celeste at the Indie Mega Booth at PAX West. When the game finally released in January 2018, it sold 500,000 copies during its first year. At the current price of $19.99, this could translate roughly to $9,995,000 US dollars. Thanks to this success, in 2019, the entire team was able to move to Vancouver from several parts of the world, thus giving birth to XOK Games. Meanwhile, Celeste reached a new milestone during its second year, 1 million copies sold. The exact numbers for 2020 are still unknown, but Maddie recently published a sequel to Celeste Classic to celebrate the game's third anniversary. As of this moment, Celeste sits with a 97% overwhelmingly positive rating on Steam and is also available for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and Google Stadia. Next up is Battle Royale Tycoon by Endless Loop Studios. Battle Royale Tycoon is a tycoon management simulation where you can build a park filled with different types of live battleground arenas. Guests will participate in the arenas, complete the activities, or even fight to the death with other guests. Of course, at the end of each round, their HP goes back to normal and they'll go to yet another arena. Recoup expenses, pay your staff, build bigger and better arenas, attract more guests, rinse, repeat. Hugo Cardoso, who also goes by the name of Code Monkey on his YouTube channel, is the sole developer behind Endless Loop Studios. He defines his career as a successful one, without any massive hits. Battle Royale Tycoon is his eighth game in a seven-year development career, and he claims to be very satisfied with his current revenue. So, how is he doing? 
According to an article he published in Gama Sutra, his game, Battle Royale Tycoon, sold 3,700 copies in its first month of full release, for a gross revenue of $27,000. If we include early access sales, the total jumps to 15,000 copies, meaning a revenue of $120,000. After platform fees and taxes, he was left with $50,000. Hugo, in a video about his game's revenue, assures that the most important factors in making your game stand out are announcing your game as soon as possible, gathering as many wishlists on your game as you can, and selling a decent number of copies on your first days while getting a minimum of 10 reviews in that time. Make sure to check out Hugo's YouTube channel and the rest of his titles on Steam. We'll have links in the description. Now, let's go to the mobile space with Starlight X2 by Frozax. Starlight X2 is a space-themed puzzle game available for Android and iOS where you place asteroids and connect stars to unlock a number of challenging levels and countless facts about the universe. Francois Guibert, lead developer at Frozax, recently released a blog post on his website called Revenue, Expenses, and Statistics of Starlight X2, a mobile puzzle game where he recaps all the statistics related to the income during the first six months of monetizing his game through a free-to-download model. Starlight X2 is fully playable in its free version, so it receives income through several strategies. Players will have to watch a video at the end of certain levels. They can opt into watching other video ads to unlock special rewards and levels. They can pay to remove video ads. They can purchase one and two dollar packs and they can subscribe for one week, one month, or six months to unlock every aspect of the game. The total expenses for developing Starlight X2 were €5,530, split across advertising, translations, art, and ASO, App Store Optimization, which, by the way, the developer noted made no change or improvement for his game. The game recouped €2,554 Euro in six months, with video ads being the highest form of revenue and subscriptions the lowest. Not all indie games turn out to be profitable, but this hasn't stopped Frozax to keep on growing. The developer has since released two more mobile games, Three Seconds, a casual game about quick reflexes, and DNA Mutations, an eye-catching pixel art retro puzzle game about DNA. Launching a successful Kickstarter campaign is perhaps one of the best things that can happen to your indie game. This is exactly what Nathaniel Ayer, the lead developer behind Rockwell Studios, did to bring Himeko Satori to a successful launch. Himeko Satori is a tactical turn-based fantasy RPG that features all the good stuff. Knights, clerics, rogues, illusionists, barbarians, mages, warlocks, skeletons, mummies, and more. Nathaniel built an awesome team to bring his game to life. For the game's music, Nathaniel went all in and sought out composer Kevin Wan, a talented young composer previously involved with productions like Batman, Arkham Knight, Doctor Who, and Sherlock. Not stopping there, he also brought in Shane Butler from Endymion Games, a talented pixel artist and fellow indie developer, to contribute to the final 2D on 3D look Nathaniel wanted to achieve with his game. But how could Nathaniel afford these fantastic talents in his development project? Well, after investing his free time to build a custom game engine, he launched a Kickstarter campaign in 2016 that successfully raised $10,965 US dollars. With this money, he was able to build the game and seek the help he needed to complete it. The game was put into early access on Steam, and it earned $50,000 during this period. Himeko Satori was finally released in January 2021. With 32,000 wishlists on pre-release, the game made $35,000 in its first week, which could mean a first-year projection of $70,000 to $350,000 according to an article presented on Gama Sutra. This range would be $49,000 to $245,000 after Steam's cut, and Nathaniel projects it will most likely be $110,000. Himeko Satori appears to be presenting an interesting opportunity for Rockwell Studios' future endeavors.
In the year of 2011, when LCD screens were already a thing of the past, a studio by the name of Dawn of Play created an impeccable handheld LCD device simulator with the sole purpose of hosting monkey labor. This is an 80s handheld LCD retro game that recreates with high precision every detail there is to notice about the 80s LCD handheld games. With static and simplistic sprite positions, funny and painful delayed input response, screen ripples at the touch of one or several fingers, and an overly simplistic backstory, Monkey Labor is the perfect trigger for those who are pursuing a high-quality nostalgia trip. Mate Yan, lead developer at Dawn of Play, released an extensive post in Gama Sutra, revealing their highs and lows with Monkey Labor. After the team of five finished the game and released it on iOS, they had mixed feelings about the outcome. The game was featured under the new and noteworthy games list of the iOS App Store and gathered a couple of positive reviews and ratings. This pushed it to sell a bit more than a thousand units over the course of a year. Later on, the team tried their luck with PC gaming and published the game on a new indie platform called Indie City. They sold seven units. After getting a total revenue of no more than $2,000, Mateyan wrote his article to shout out this message. Your first game will probably be a flop in business terms, but it's an epic win for you. 95% of the guys that were loud on those hobby game dev forums you've grown up on never got that far. But you, you've done it. Last, but definitely not least, is Dead Cells by indie studio Motion Twin. Winner of several Best Game and Game of the Year accolades, this roguelite Metroidvania action platformer takes elements and mechanics from epic gems like Dark Souls and Castlevania and spices it all up with stunning artwork and animation. This amazing combo earned the game a solid 96% overwhelmingly positive rating on Steam. Based in Bordeaux, France, Motion Twin had no previous experience with releases as big as Dead Cells. They did have some experience in the browser and mobile game space, but they definitely had aspirations to go big one day, just like they did. After taking the leap, they found themselves on a successful journey even before launching the game. How? In October 2018, Sebastian Bernard gave a Dead Cells development post-mortem at Pocket Gamer Connects Helsinki 2018. According to Sebastian, Dead Cells was launched as an early access title on Steam in early 2017. During their early access, the game sold 1 million copies on Steam alone. The game was released in August 2018 for PC, Mac, Linux, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch, and its sales have been rising ever since. In its first year, it sold more than 2 million copies, with Nintendo Switch being their main source of income. In its second year, Dead Cells had entered the iOS and Android markets and crossed the 3 million milestone, reaching 3.5 million copies sold by July 2020. The sales did not stop there. In February of 2021, Dead Cells entered the Chinese market with the moniker Reborn Cells. And reborn they were. The title moved 1 million copies in China within a few days of launch, pushing the title past the 5 million units mark. Thanks for watching. For more Ask Game Dev, check out this list on video game budgets or this list on video game marketing.